Paulus. Thank you for joining the podcast today. I have a special guest, uh, Dr. Uh, Ted uh, McElroy. Um, he is jo uh, joining us from SECO International today to talk about uh, the event coming up in March. Maria, thank, thank you for having me today. I'm really excited about this. Yeah, I'm excited to have you too. You know, I've been to SECO numerous times and it, I think it's a great event. And I think that a lot of people should learn about it and see what's going on. And it's, um, again, a hundred year anniversary. So I think it's a great time to go to Atlanta and get some great education and just, just see what SECO is all about. Thank you. For those of you that do not know um, Dr. McElroy, he's the founder of practice of Vision Source in Georgia. Um, numerous awards and in, in, as young optometrist of the year, optometrist of the year, and uh, you know, has speaker bureaus for VSP, Alcon, Vision Source, among that, um, and writes for different magazines. But also, I wanted him on the podcast today because he serves as SECO International, the chair for MedPro 360 Committee, the business education program, and um, he has a lot of great information on that. And it's a great program. So I wanted the listeners to get more information on Med360. And also for those of you that do not know, he also co-hosts iCode Media podcast with Chris Wolf, uh, which I've been on and is a great podcast to listen to as well if you get a chance. So let's uh, jump right into it. Uh, Ted, what is Med360 for the listeners that haven't been to SECO? So MedPro 360 is a program geared toward business education because, as you know, Maria, when we were all in school, we didn't get a lot of business education. And I, I'm just going back and looking at my years, uh, you know, of how to figure out how to just get from A to B. And we all realize that A to B is not a straight line. It's kind of a zigzaggy thing and a lot more down than it is up a lot of times. And so one of the things that we started looking at in SECO was the fact that our education, as far as the business education, which we're trying to classify more of that as opposed to just calling it practice management, it needed to have a, a little bit more of a home uh, because if you're having something that's really geared toward a place where it can live, you're going to put a lot more attention to it. You're going to start isolating it in a way that it needs to have some isolation, but still not being sequestered, if you know what I mean. Um, that way it it kind of has a chance to flourish and uh, MedPro 360 has gone through quite a few iterations since it first started. We, we kind of envisioned it to be kind of a, more of a uh, idea sharing program where we brought in these keynote type speakers and we had that for a couple of years, but it wasn't getting the traction that we felt like it needed to. So our first year in new Orleans, I think it was 2019, um, maybe earlier than that, I can't recall exactly what year, was the first year we changed the way the program was done. We, we actually put it more in a, in a way of, of it truly digging into business education. There was a focus on how to look at um, private equity and how it was changing the face of optometry. We looked at um, different ways of actually just managing your, your finances. I uh, had Mick Clean come in and he did a profit first education program, which was really impressive for a lot of people. And it affects so many different areas, not even just our practices, but us personally as well, because I mean, you can take a lot of these same kind of principles and figure out how to do your checkbook a little differently or something like that. So we looked at it from a point of where can this go in the future to take any type of business person, regardless of your type of practice, and give you the success that you want and the success that you look for. No, I think that's great. There, a lot of doctors do not have practice management. Talk to a lot of doctors in the industry yeah. just coming out, whether it's starting a sublease or moving from sublease to private practice start. And a lot of them are nervous about, you know, practice management. I, I just spoke with a doctor yesterday who has a sublease and looking to buy a practice, private practice. And uh, she told me that she's nervous about jumping to, uh, private practice because she hasn't done optical stuff, sales and things like that since optometry school, right? So uh, going to Med th Pro um, 360 would be a great opportunity for her, I thought, um, just to get all that information for optical as well. So, but it's beyond just business, right? So you said private equity, and I'm sure there's optical education there too. Um, Definitely. That's where our bread and butter comes from still. 
Yeah. And the, and we also wanted this not to be just geared toward the owner doctors. We also want it to be geared toward the team, uh, looking at it from a point of where, could, where does that practice manager fit in? Where does the rest of the team fit in? Um, looking at challenges that occur, uh, for instance, this year, Lynn Lawrence and Tammy Franklin are going to do a program of, you know, what, and I, I wish, I apologize, I can't re exactly remember the name of the program, but it's basically looking at, well, this is what the uh, leader said that they wanted, but this is what the team heard. And, and how does that reconcile with each other? And to, to really put it into a point, so making sure that the communication is not getting lost, um, uh, many of you may know of Adam Schmela, who is a personal finance person that advises optometry practices only. And he has a great comment that he makes. He says, basically, there is a seamless transition between the end of communication and the beginning of resentment. And that happens in our practices all day long, you know, because we think we're saying one thing and what's getting heard is something completely different. And that can happen at any level, whether it's leader to followers or just among teammates. So if we can improve the communication skills, it's so much better and makes life so much more fulfilling. What are some educational goals and, and, and how is that impacting our profession? You know, the education goals that take place in MedPro 360 are, are again, geared more toward the practice leadership and um, making sure that they're leading from a point of strength not necessarily spending all their time in their weaknesses. I mean, I'm not saying we don't need to know what our weaknesses are, but there's this thing that happens in, especially in the United States, I think, where we think, oh, we've got to make our weaknesses better because that's the only way to do it. When we spend so much time and energy not focusing on our strengths and instead looking for people who can fulfill some of those weaknesses for us. So if we can figure out what those aspects are in our practices in our own leadership styles, think about what they can do for the profession in general. Uh, you know, and, and Maria, you, you are a great leader and have an opportunity to influence a lot of people. And that's really what this comes down to is the influence that comes from all this. Oh, thank you. Uh, so I think with this, just beyond just OD, corporate ODs, I think could benefit from this as well. And most of our audience is corporate OD. Can you give us some information on how, you know, SECO or Med Pro 360 would be a you know, for the corporate OD? Certainly. You know, one of the things we already talked about was just the interpersonal skills and, and just being able to work within a group of people. And, you know, a lot of your corporate OD uh, audience, they're looking at how to run their business because it is truly a business. You know, you've got to make sure it's going to make money. And part of that is the changing ways that you're being influenced by uh, how your lease is drawn up or maybe, how you would like to be able to bill for certain things and making sure you're getting paid for those things, uh, the equipment that goes along with it and how to make money with that equipment. You need to know how to make sure those technical issues are working in your favor. Um, another thing is just your day to day. How do you, how do you manage your day? Uh, there's a guy named Jim Schneider who's going to do a program basically on taking skills that he learned with a program called business accelerator and teaching that, of how your life is impacted by the amount of time you spend doing certain things and looking at different rituals. For instance, uh, you know, we all have a, a process that we go through every single day from the moment we get up till the time we go to bed, but we don't really approach it from a point of planning it. We just kind of let life happen to us. And what Jim's planning on doing is teaching, you know, well, here's the process that you go through your day with, you know, you have sort of what you call your morning ritual. Um, you, you know, most of the time you think you just get up, you get ready and you go to work. Well, that's not exactly how it works. And if that is the way it kind of works for you, haphazardly, you can't figure out how come you're always running late or you're always just stressed out all the time. Well, he's gone through this program where he actually takes each and every little step along the way from the moment he gets his feet hit the floor from the bed till he leaves to head out to go to work. And then he has, that's called his morning ritual. And then after that, there's a ritual that's done called your uh, work workday startup ritual. What are the things that you do to get started at work before you get going? Uh, one of the things that he had that was a challenge for him and his wife uh, were at the end of the day, how do you just stop the day? How do you keep 
taking stuff, how you keep from taking things home with you every single day. So there's a literally a workday shutdown ritual that he goes through so he can close out the end of the day and know that at the end of the day he's leaving with things mostly finished the way it needs to be. And then going home and having another ritual that he does at the end of the day, which is his, his end of the day ritual. So he's making sure that he understands that the beginning of the next day is kind of contingent upon the end of the last day. So I think, you know, one of the things we ignore most in our lives is just taking care of ourselves, not getting enough sleep, not getting enough exercise. If you're kind of letting your life haphazardly happen to you, what happens? You know, um, so having all that stuff planned out ahead of time makes it significantly easier. And, and there's a lot of other tools that he's planning on talking about in this talk that he's going to do. Uh, but it's going to be a, a very impactful thing for just about anybody in any level of the practice, regardless of whether you're the owner or whether you're someone that's just part of the team. Yeah, I think it's, yeah, practice management is so much more and what you bring to the practice, right, as well. So that's a good aspect. And just going back, like there's going to be a lot of billing, coding stuff. That's yes. very important. A lot of ODs will ask those questions, uh, how to get started, and then advance to medical model. Uh, medical model has been increasingly popular in corporate optometry mm -hmm. uh, because doctors don't make money from optical sales, so they need to increase their per patient transaction. That's one great way to do so. I get a lot of questions about it um, in the group, and, and something like this, a crash course that you can get in three, four days, get all the information you need is, I think, so important. Um, what are some trends you're seeing in, in practice management over the last couple of years? Some of the trends are, are really trying to look at better ways to delegate, how to get more done um, without having to basically kill yourself doing it, you know. Uh, and, and part of the problem is we don't know how to delegate very well. Um, we, we tend to think that, again, it kind of goes back to I thought I said this when actually what actually happened was this. Uh, because of that miscommunication. So looking at ways to better delegate our teams that we work with, and I'm sure, especially in the corporate optometry realm, you're dealing with two separate teams. You've got your own team where you're working through taking care of your guests, making sure that the appointments are taken care of in a timely manner, and then making that transition into the optical that, you know, you really don't have as much control over. So making sure that that handoff takes place in a way that you, the doctor, are controlling that particular part of the transaction. So it's more of a relationship build as opposed to it being just transactional. Um, also making sure that people understand how important it is that they're coming back to you to take, to get the care that they need. And um, you know, that you're able to, to bill as you were talking about earlier, you'll be able to bill that for them as opposed to them having to go outside on their own or coming out of their pocket to take care of it. And the power that brings you as a practitioner and as a business owner is, is incredible. How do you guys select education um, for this event each year? Uh, do you have like an, a committee that gets together? How do you, how do you guys do that? Cause it seems like it's fresh new content every year that I come. I, I, I think Seco is, is top notch when it comes to education. Yes, there is a committee and uh, it's led uh, overarchingly by uh, Dr. Paula Jamian who is not only a good friend of mine, but also a very big mentor of mine. Uh, when I was in going through optometry school, I spent three of the, as I refer to him, three of the toughest month of my life uh, was under his tutelage at the Omni Eye Center in Atlanta. And I learned more about disease care and, and how to take care of those parts of the patient than I probably learned almost the entire time I was in school because it was just rapid fire, constantly one person after the next making sure you were taking care of those people in, in a timely manner, but you learned a ton. And when I came out, just the, um, the confidence that I had to be able to take care of our guests and our practice the way it was just, it was incredible. I could, I couldn't thank him enough for what he did for me, but he has had a, a really tap into what the newest trends are in education, what the newest trends are in disease treatment. He's exposed himself to so many different things that a lot of us would never have had the opportunity to just because of the way he began his practice. Um, uh, it's, it's coincidentally, uh, not many people know this, but he actually started off thinking he was going to be CO doing COVD versus doing pathology. And, um, you know, 
when he told me that for the first time, I was like, you have to be kidding me, you know, because I, I just never expected to hear him say that. But uh, because of his experience he got with Bascom Palmer going through and how much that influenced him and what he wanted to see moving forward, he's been able to take that love that he has of pathology and disease care and really turn it into something that's opened up doors for all of us optometrists that we couldn't thank him enough for. Uh, but because of that, he's also made some great connections with people over the years. And he's exposed himself to the ability to be able to find some of these new speakers that you probably don't see at a lot of the, at a lot of the meetings. Um, they come to us from recommendations. We also try to make sure that we are putting new faces on stage on a regular basis because don't get me wrong. You know, you, I, you probably can think of three or four people that you just absolutely love to hear at almost every single meeting. And, and they are fantastic. And there's a reason that they're there because they're that good. But if that's all you ever heard, sooner or later, you're going to burn out on it. So it's important to have some of those new faces and those new voices that are driving the way education is being done, that are driving the way you learn and just being told a different story. Um, you know, having you on our stage last year, Maria, I mean, that kind of thing is is really incredible to have new faces. And so we appreciate having that type of aspect to our practices and to our education. Yeah, I, I mean, it was an honor. And fun fact for, for the listeners, SICO was the first uh, uh, avenue or, or event that, um, you know, took in a corporate optometry lecture, how to get started on the sublease and things like that. So um, SICO is uh, innovative in, in new things. And now others have uh, accepted the content too. So, but SICO was the first um, and, and we had a few doctors sign up and because it's, um, it's a lot of content, a lot of information that's not out there. So um, it, it was great to, to, to be able to speak on that and did do some social media stuff in the past as well, which is important. That's part of your business to grow. Um, so there are a lot of new content that's out at SECO. What is different this year with it being the 100 years of SECO? Oh, my gosh. Um, you know, just being able to reflect back on, you know, what our past successes have been, where we're currently, but also looking to the future of where we see things going. Um, one of the programs, actually, I'm, we're going to do some, some fun stuff that are education that are more, I don't want to say it's necessarily infotainment, but it definitely is going to be educational and entertaining at the same time. Uh, we're going to do one program on site where it's going to be sort of some fun and games that I'm going to get to do. And we're going to just talk about how to deal with stress. Um, you know, and I'm going to, take a lot of what I learned from a program that I spent a lot of money uh, to learn how to handle my stress a lot better and how to handle my time and my day better. And we're going to play some games between some of the talking and then we're going to get back at the talking again. So it's going to stretch out for a couple hours, but it's going to be a lot of more fun as opposed to just always talking about the education. But yes, we're going to hit all the high points. We're going to make sure Cope stays happy with what we're going to do um, in a way that they're going to learn something. Yeah. So practice management goes beyond just, you know, everything that we talk about. It's really doctor versus CEO, right? So when you're the right. owner, you have to, you're the clinical doctor and now you're the CEO of the practice. So this plat, this platform at SECO MedPro360, I think gives you all those different layers of practice management to make you a better CEO um, in your practice. Where do you see this heading uh, with this conference and maybe future conferences as being this, you know, the CEO of, of your practice instead of the doctor owner. Well, one of the things we have to do is we've got to look outside of our profession. Uh, and I think that's one of the reasons why a lot of the speakers that we're getting are getting on our stage is because they do tend to look on the outside of what's going on outside of our profession. That influences a lot of the education that they bring back in because those successes that they saw outside of their practices they're actually seeing um, and then taking that back into their practice and applying it. Um, so that's, that's part of what was going on. I, th I think that's probably the most important thing because we have become, or in years past have become very siloed. We, we spend a lot more time just talking to each other and that becomes a very unfortunate thing because we're not opening ourselves up to the possibility that there's something else out, out there. Uh, and I think actually that was one of the blessings that came out of, of COVID was the fact that what did this make possible? What kind of, what kind of things, even though this is tough, this is going to be hard, but what does this make possible? Well, it gets me an opportunity to sit back and see what I'm not doing 
or, or, or what I'm not learning and who has that knowledge? Well, maybe is it outside of my profession? And so we would like to see as, as much as we can try to bring people who really aren't optometrists into our meeting to, to talk to us about some of those business ideas and, and things that they've learned so that not only are, are, is our business acumen sharpening, I would hope that we rub off on them a little bit, that they take it back to their practices and their businesses as well. No, I think that's great. You know, I, um, I, I was a guest on a podcast last couple of weeks ago and, uh, they asked me like, how do you keep up? And, and I, I do, I, I, I read magazines and things outside our profession about business, um, because it's a different perspective on how to see stuff. Sometimes we all have the same ideas and we just keep on, um, giving out the same advice and things like that. It's the same thing with speakers. It's trying to get different people and get a different point of view and just, you know, one might relate to one person, might relate to another. And um, having that outside perspective looking in sometimes gets you a better image of your practice too. Like my husband's an engineer. And so if I asked him about something, he looks at it differently and he looks at it probably like my patients look at it, yeah. right? Like you said, you say something, they hear something else. And um, I think that's important to see it and just kind of, I say, clean your lenses, clean your your, your vision up to kind of see it a little differently. Um, and it's just a way to kind of think like your customer, why would your customer, your patients want to come in to see you as a practice, but also customers for the optical. Right. So right. Um, I think those are important skills to, to, you know, take into their practice. And I think med pro 360 would be a great resource for the, a lot of doctors to go to Seco and get information. What are some other programs outside the annual con uh, Congress about MedPro 360 that we didn't talk about? Um, you know, one of the other things is a possibility for uh, especially people that are, who are getting the uh, grand package. I believe that's what the title they're using for it. Um, you've got access to video content. Let's say you didn't have an opportunity to go listen to a speaker that you wanted to. A lot of this stuff is going to be uh, captured and put onto Seco University, which is another great tool that you can use throughout the year. Uh, or if you're like me, sometimes once isn't enough. You need to hear it three or four times before you really get the impact out of it. Um, you know, because maybe you just didn't quite pick up exactly what the speaker's intent was, or maybe there was this one thing you were writing feverishly and they went on to another topic while you're writing it down and you just missed it. So having that ability to go back and, and listen to Seco University or see the content that's been taped, um, it, it really makes it taped, recorded. Uh, you know, that's, that's the old man in me coming out talking about videotape, um, but recorded so that we can actually have that ability to go back and reflect on some of the things that we learned, learn something we missed, make sure that we're applying the things that go to our businesses and our practices in the best way we can. Yeah, I think it's important. That's that's another big thing from COVID that things have shifted, right? Online CE. So the doctors that aren't able to attend, um, they have that information and they have it whenever they need, they want to do it. And there's a lot of information and with practice management, but a lot of great clinical information too. I signed right. up for my CE for, for the event. And I think there's more CE this year than ever before that I've seen. Um, you can kind of really pack in CE uh, in a few days if that's what your goal is um, to go. But also the marketplace, I find, for technology and things like that has been tremendous for me to go touch, play with this technology, talk to the reps, see what how I can incorporate it into my practice. Um, so that is something I think of value too. And you get some discounts. Um, from the vendors at these events that you might not get um, just calling them to come to your office as well. You know, Maria, that's a, that's a great point you make, you know, because we, we tend to think that education only happens in the exam, in the classroom and it doesn't. I mean, if you're not taking advantage of some of the education you can get standing in a booth, talking to a vendor about their product. And I'm talking about every single level from a mom and pop, you know, real small, business that's trying to make it just like we are, uh, all the way up to, you know, your, your larger companies, your optosses and, and those things, there's a, a wealth of education you're going to get from those people and just standing around in the booth and, you know, bumping into your buddies that are walking up about the same time you're talking about it. And, Oh, I'm, yeah, I'm using this. Oh, how are you? oh my gosh. I never even thought about using it that way. Uh, you know, because there are a lot of 
quote unquote off label things you can do with some of these pieces of a technology that you would bring in your practice. And that opens a door that you just never thought possible before. Um, so definitely spend a lot of time in the exhibit hall. Uh, but you're, and you are correct. The, the savings that you get from the vendors during an event like this is, is like no other. Yeah. You know, I go to events, I've gone over the years and I think you can uh, say the same as the, you know, the relationships you build and networking is tremendous. If you're a young OD, you, you want to have a, buy a practice. You want to talk to someone about a sublease. You want to get information about something. You want to be a speaker in the end. You go to the events. That's how you start, right? You network, right. You, you know, you, you talk to other doctors, you find a mentor. Um, it's, you know, these events are much more than just education and practice savings. Um, the other thing too is, I mean, they have parties every night, right? They have it a good event. They, a lot of these companies are sponsoring these events. Um, I know they're every night they, Siegel has something planned and I'll post in the Facebook group about those events as well. And, um, I mean, it, it's just a great time and a camaraderie and meeting other optometrists and getting your education that you need and, you know, having a couple of drinks and enjoying, have a good time. Yeah. Because if you're not having any fun, why, why bother? I mean, it, it, it needs to balance out. It, ha it truly does. I mean, because let's face it, you know, it's, it's hard work sitting there listening all day long to somebody like me all day long. Um, you need to be able to relax a little bit, but again, I can't tell you how many things I've learned just sitting around a table talking with a bunch of people about something. And I may have spent all day in education. And the thing that I learned sitting across the table from them at dinner put way more money to my bottom line than it did sitting and listening to it. I mean, I'm not saying the education is not great. It is. Or maybe something that was said in that education and the discussion that takes place sparks an idea that comes about. It, it's, it's what happens sometimes in the hallway is definitely as empower as important as what happens in the classroom. No, it's great because doctors will connect, they'll network, they'll talk about what's best practices. And, and that's how I've gotten some great ideas to grow my practice over the years and, and other things on how to scale. So, but it's been going to these conferences too, and just networking with, you know, key opinion leaders and people that are experts in their industry on certain topics and and getting their advice and seeing how where you stand, right? Because I always come out better after the meeting. Or if I don't feel that I'm comfortable, then I'm like, okay, I need to do better, more work to get better. Um, and it really challenges you. The, the meetings, it's it's a great time to challenge yourself and see what others are doing and see how you can, you know, bring it back to your practice and um, just get better. I always say, like, if you think you're doing well, then you're not. You, you're not. You got to continue to get better. Um, and you know, best way to do it is, is at the national level, see what other doctors are doing and what different, different, um, points in their career, right? New, I right. mean, new start, older practice, private equity, corporate, whatever, everyone has a different perspective. It's just way to learn and just take what you can from them and what their successes are. Cause sometimes some things could work and some might not, but why not get as much information as you can from colleagues? People want to share. People want to collaborate. We, we want, I mean, why not help each other? It helps the profession, right? Right. We build the profession and we have so much great stuff coming out with lasers and change the scope of practice and get so much information at these conferences and workshops and things like that on these things. Um, so as me, I want to, I don't, I'm not a young OD anymore. So the older, my older doctor that I, so if we get hopefully in Rhode Island lasers, then I need to go get that certification. I need to learn more. And then that's very important, right? So these, these events, um, have a lot of this great information. Um, and it's a whole, like whole package of optometry on whatever you want from it. So one of the things that you sort of hit on, you know, too, about the cutting edge side of things or optometry that happened and a lot of it was started with SECO. Um, and I don't know what the year was and I don't know all the circumstances. It was before I had graduated from optometry school, but there was a farm body course that was taught at SECO, um, pretty much before most anybody in the country, we even had the legal ability to do it. Uh, it certainly wasn't happening in Georgia and the course was taught and we had to fight a, an injunction in Georgia to be able to teach that course. And we won. Um, you know, so having a course that was being done 
when people were pushing against optometry to not allow them to do those kind of things are exactly what has made this program so strong and so powerful. And, um, you know, and having people like you coming from outside of our SECO states, because SECO is no longer really just a regional meeting. It's something that, uh, you know, it's a nationwide meeting. Um, and, and because of the people that we brought to speak, but also because of the people that have come to attend. And, and we're so thankful that people like you are coming to our meeting. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, thank you so much for coming on the podcast today. Great uh, talk, great information about SECO and MedPro 360. I hope the listeners got a lot of great information from it as well. If somebody has a question, is is there an email that you can provide? And Well, one of the things, that if you want to know more about uh, SECO, I would recommend going to attendseco.com and that'll give you all the information you need to get registered, get started. Uh, but for me personally, if you choose, if you'd like to contact me, uh, the best way to reach me is T McElroy at friendlycity.net. And I'd be glad to respond to whatever I can for you guys. Uh, I enjoy talking about um, business education and just, you know, how to do business better. Um, I hope that I have never looked at someone and thought, well, I can't learn from that person because I think every single person has an ability to teach me something. And I'm just naturally curious. Uh, I, I, I enjoy sitting and asking questions and just trying to learn from them because it's amazing what you can learn if you just give somebody a couple moments of your time to, to soak up what they're trying to give you. That's correct. You know, I talk to a lot of OD sometimes by private message or phone if we connect on Facebook. And I, I always say, Hey, I, I can learn so much more from you too, what you're doing, even though you're a new grad, what, you know, um, I, again, I might have those lenses on that, um, just do things same way and you always get something out of it and you always, you know, you build, get a friend from it as well. Uh, another colleague friend and, you know, see what their struggles are sometimes in California or Texas and, and, um, uh, and how they dealt with certain things. And, um, it's been, it's been great to, be able to meet new optometrists uh, either at conferences or on Facebook. So, so thank you so much for coming on the podcast today, Ted. It was my pleasure, Maria. Thank you.